Okay. So there we go. We are we are now recording, and uh, thank you for uh, participating in this Evanston Magazine little uh, forum that I've been creating, and it's uh, it's been a pleasure to to have the city and the people behind me on doing this that are behind us. Most people are. They enjoy the magazine. They pick it up wherever they can find it throughout the city. Uh, people are on the email list and they check it out. So today I'm with Henry Wilkins, who is um, who has an interesting position with the STEM School of Evanston. He's also my fraternity brother. So uh, we're going to uh, start with, man, Give us a little background, Henry, on one, what your actual title is and the involvement that you have behind that on, uh, when it comes to STEM school of, uh, of Evanston. Okay, thanks. Thanks for um, having me on here, uh, Brother Foster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I began this journey to um, advocate for a STEM focused community school, STEM standing for science, technology, engineering, and math about three years ago. and. Mm -hmm. Um, started when I was at a school board meeting. So I have two kids in the school district, one in the fifth grade and one in first grade at, uh, they're both at Walker. And I was at a school board meeting and a gentleman stood up during public comments and said, hey, now's the time to open a school in the fifth ward. We've been wanting a school and a lot of the problems that we see in the school district would, you know, disappear if we had a school. And I was like, what is this guy talking about? Right. What you know, who, what is this fifth ward business? So I went online, did some research and found out there's an area of Evanston where kids, where there was a school, the school was called Foster. They shut it down. Right. They divided up all the kids from this area and sent them to several different schools across the school district to help with integration. Mm hmm about that, my heart broke because I knew that, you know, getting on a bus, not having a school close to where you live negatively impacts your educational experience. Right. I felt we got to do something about that. So I reached out to Alderman Simmons and I said, hey, you know, what are your thoughts of a school? She's like, I absolutely support a school in the fifth ward. Why don't you get a group of people together and start, you know, talking about it. So we had our first meeting. We, uh, the meeting included Oliver Ruff, Jerome Summers, Kirby Callum, Bruce King, obviously Alderman Simmons kicked it off. Bobby Burns was there. One of my undergrad uh, friends, Tad Block was there. Um, I don't know if I mentioned the CB4. So like Jill Logan, I think I covered everybody. Uh, and then, you know, we had that meeting and then we grew. We, you know, met with more people, attended and then uh, after a couple of meetings, I just kind of went rogue and I said, okay, you know, who are all the major stakeholders in Evanston to get this thing done? And mm -hmm. so I went out and connected with a lot of people to get their uh, points of view, the Hecky Powell's of the world, Dolores Holmes of the world, and said, hey, what are your thoughts? And, um, you know, we, we just sharpened our vision a little bit more and just expanded um, our outreach. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of the, the genesis of, of it all. Yeah, it sounds it sounds interesting. And I've been watching you guys do this specifically, just been watching you primarily because it seems like you're the face of this thing and you're the, the one yeah. that's actually pushing it the, the hardest and the most. So thank you for that. The fifth, yeah. fifth Ward is uh is actually right now in a incredible run for the alderman. The next alderman in the fifth ward is gonna have a lot of really important work to do. So we're looking forward to finding out who's actually going to win that seat. And you mentioned Bobby Burns, who at this point I think is the lead for that. And you have Carolyn and you have the other girl, uh, young lady, his last name is Mendoza. Um, so that's cool. But when it comes to the school itself, um, where do you see the progress in, uh, in where you are right now? Can you lay that out for us? Yeah, sure. So, you know, as I said, three years ago, you know, the outreach kind of began um, within the last, you know, six to nine months, we kind of took it to the next level, if you will. And when I say the next level, one of the things that we want to do is we needed money to actually perform feasibility studies. Initially, you know, we had all been about advocating like, hey, you know, let's just build as much community support as possible. And then we'll put, you know, will present that to the school board and the school board will take it and run with it. Perform feasibility studies. Initially, 
Did you hear that feedback? Did I, yeah, I had some weird feedback there, but keep going. I'm sorry. Bro. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so we, we thought our group was all about advocating and, you know, we would just present our support to the school board and they would take it and run with it. And one of our meetings uh, with one of the current school board members, they said, you know, hey, you know, how, what's the cost of this? You know, what's your financial plan for this? And I'm like, well, that's not our role. Our role is to build support and advocacy. It should be the school district's job to, to figure out what the cost is. And, it, you know, we don't have visibility to this detail, visibility to this, to the budget, you know, that, that's not our role. And um, so I took that initially pushed back, say, you know, that's not my job. But then I kind of woke up. I, I said, you know what, forget it. We're going to have to figure this out. You know, we're going to have to take on more than just being an advocacy group. So uh, we ran into an individual that has experience with um, finding, finding creative ways to finance schools. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we looked to him to do a feasibility study. So our big breakthrough happened in the fall where Evanston Community Foundation had provide, had granted us, given us a grant yeah. to form a feasibility study that would help to identify potential locations for the school, help to figure out how much is, you know, all the different options, you know, how can you finance the school? One of the key things that we felt was important is that we do this school without requiring a tax referendum mm -hmm. and not putting a, a financial strain on the school district that would lead them to closing a school. Those were two key elements that we, you know, charged uh, the person with to, you know, when they were doing the feasibility work. So we got a grant of twenty-five thousand to begin the work. Uh, a, you know, it's made a lot of progress. We're actually still short uh, to complete, fully complete the study. So we're short about thirteen thousand five hundred for that work. Okay. We're also looking for funding to do community engagement, community research to understand, like, hey, what is the community say? What are they thinking about this? And we're really focusing on the Black community at this phase, understanding, hey, you know, is this STEM community school a form of repair or redress as a result of foster school closing? And we'll be open with it, you know, hey, we believe a school is, you know, is the right answer. However, there could be other things too, and we're, we hope to learn that along the way. Um, so we're actually going to be competing for Northwestern uh, equity grants. It's a, it's a racial, uh, it's a it's a social a racial justice grant. Uh, this was announced, I'd say, like two or three weeks ago. So we'll be competing for that grant, uh, and in hopes to do some of that that community uh, reach and engagement. So we'll see. So we're crossing our fingers that you know we we win out that grant, um, and then there's some other uh, work that we're also going to do. We also need uh, funds to understand how much we can raise privately. So there's a, a fundraising firm that uh, specializes in that type of work to understand, you know, hey, how much can you really raise? You know, is it 5 million, is it 10 million? How much uh, is available privately, uh, you know, for the school? So we need money for that. So I would say, you know, those three things, again, the feasibility study, the, the uh, community research piece and the fundraising uh, research piece, those three elements, are what we say foundational. That's, you know, before the school even, you know, breaks ground or anything, we have to, we need money for that work. Um, and then, you know, the next phase, you know, ideally would be to, to line up, you know, the financing piece of it. You know, how do you, you know, where is this money gonna come from? Is it gonna come from firms? Is it gonna come from, you know, organizations, high wealth people, you know, where's it gonna come from? So we gotta figure out that. So that's kind of where things are now. And we're gonna continue to advocate. I mean, we'll, you know, we sponsor the District D5 uh, school board debate. Uh, we sponsor the Fifth Ward Alderman uh, Forum. So we'll we'll continue to be out there and you know spread spread the word. Yeah, um, I've seen again. I've seen you guys do some incredible work. Your visibility is is super strong. Now, there's a couple of like questions that I have now um, a little bit since I got you on there. It seems that um, if I were to look at a the, the work that you're doing, it seems like the, the whole country should be behind you. You know what I mean? I mean, Evanston is being looked at right now through a microscope, especially based on the reparations um, decision that was made by the Fifth Ward Alderman 
uh, prior to this new um, group that's going to come in. So you would think that there's going to be lots of people behind y'all internationally, probably. Is that right. the case? Have you found uh, have you found that there are places that are looking for uh, to help you guys? And if so, could you name some of those that are in support of you just to give them encouragement to support you even harder? Yeah, so um, unfortunately, no, <laughs> we haven't wow. gotten the support, um, you know, outside of Evanston at this point. Um, you know, I, I think if we were to expand our outreach outside, you know, the, the city limits of Evanston, I agree. I believe that there would be a lot of support uh, for this work. Yeah. You know, I think that's your strength. Yeah. I think right. the strength of what of, of where the bulk of the money is going to come to you guys, and it's just my opinion, is from the sympathizers outside of uh, Evanston who want to see Evanston as a whole succeed because Evanston today, with the reparation situation, with the climate where Black folks and white folks are at least having conversations and getting along and who are on somewhat the same sides, Evanston is on the right side of history right now. So yeah, right. You know, so why so a lot of these big institutions that give out grants and give out funding uh, should be, if they're serious about the mo uh, about the stuff that they preach, should be behind this. Maybe if the information gets to them or, you know, what have you, because people live in their own bubbles, man. I, I'd love to see that happen for you guys. That would be yeah, fantastic. Yeah, 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 I agree. That would be phenomenal. Yeah, I'm, we're waiting. I mean, even in Chicago, I mean, if we get yeah. out of this is Chicago, mm -hmm. I, I have joked that, you know, I would love for someone to talk to Oprah Winfrey, you know what I mean? Hey, <laughs> like, the Obama you know, Foundation. The Obama, exactly, that's exactly yeah. where I was going next, right? The Obama Foundation seems like it would be a, a good place to uh, to reach out to and, and seek support from. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've heard people say is a lot of people look at Evanston, they say, oh, well, you know, that's that, you know, suburban city. They, they got Northwestern in their backyard. You know, you got these high wealth people here, you know, black, they don't need help. <laughs> <laughs> they say, okay, you know, you know, they only invest dollars in, you know, Chicago. So, I mean, people don't know the story and, you know, tell them the story about this area. I mean, redlining is the reason why there were so many black folks in this particular area to begin with. I mean, mm -hmm. heard a presentation by Dino Robinson and, you know, the history is sad, you know, and if we can get that word out to folks, I think there would be a lot of support for yeah. what we do. Yeah. I, I think that's another one of those uh, points where, uh, people who want to reverse those old ways would be able to grab hold of and or people who like yourself in a position during your argument, you can, you know, quote Dino's um, presentation and use that almost as a way to flip the script on people who say that they're liberal or say that they're interested in the world being in a place where um, you know, the white supremacy table is leveled out, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. again, I'm, I, I would love to see, I would love to hear about the, um, hear the level of, of interest in what you guys are doing to, to, to boom internationally so yeah. that, uh, you know, I mean, there should be money coming from Britain and, and, Quebec and you yeah. know, you know, all types yeah. of places just to just because of this. And uh, the other thing that you mentioned was our relationship to, to Chicago, which we share a border with here in Evanston and Chicago share a border. Um, the, the world is watching Chicago. They're always criticizing the number of killings and now the carjacking epidemics. But when it comes down to it, the studies say that the problem has to do with financing education, financing mm -hmm. jobs, and, and where better than a STEM school to start erasing those problems, right? Yeah, right, so we're, right. We're in a good, we're, we're in a good, uh, we're in a good point in history where things can be 
uh, leveraged and move forward. Yeah. So that's coming to, you know, what's your plan to move forward from where you guys stand or do y'all have? A yeah, yeah, yeah. So the next phase, you know, like I said, if we, we can get this funding for the foundational work, you know, the school district right now is focused on um, student assignments. So they're looking to figure out, you know, where students are going to be assigned uh, to what schools. And so at the end of that work, the belief is that, you know, it's going to highlight that there's going to be a fifth ward school needed, a school in the central core. And at that point, we will have already provided to the school district, you know, the type of school we, we think they ought to adopt. We'll, you know, share with them, you know, a location option. We'll share with them a financial plan. And all they got to do is just take it and, you know, accept the present, open it up, <laughs> tweak it, whatever they want to do, change. Right. And that's it. Um, you know, for me, I, I'm a parent that cares and I have no interest in being a part of the school. I have no interest in being on the board. I have no interest in running for political office. I just want to know that, you know, that we've taken it to the point where it's the school is, we, we know it's going to open and I disappear. <laughs> <laughs> My, my vision is, you know, I go back to coaching soccer or, you know, uh, assistant coaching baseball or softball, you know, that's, you know, I have more capacity for, for that type of work. So, um, so yeah, so for me, I, you know, I just want to drop and run, <laughs> <laughs> but I won't let it go until I, I see the finish line and, you know, we, we've crossed the finish line. So, um, you know, I think, again, you know, I'd say over the next two years, one of the things we're going to do is create a planning committee to figure out, hey, what's what's our next move over the next six months? What's our next move over the next 12 months? There's some key decisions that will have to be made. Um, you know, we we are in a really good spot right now. I mean, we we have we have some some strong uh, location candidates mm -hmm. uh, of where the school could be. We have a vision of, you know, kindergarten through eighth. Um, you know, we have a vision that, you know, the school is a magnet type of attendance school, similar to King Arts Lab. Uh, again, you know, we're not the school district administration. We're not on the board. Um, you know, I, my background is in business finance. So I'm going to be relying on folks that have much <laughs> stronger backgrounds in education and school planning to, to kind of just take it and run with it. Um, you know, I'm all about, you know, bringing people together building a support and, uh, you know, hopefully the next two or three years, I just disappear. <laughs> right. I, I, I feel you on that one. Yeah. Go ahead and create what you need it to be and then go on to your next project. And then the, the city of Evanston um, will absolutely thank you for that in, in whatever way possible. Like maybe you'll get yeah. a street named after you like Dino <laughs> just did. Right, Dino. Right, right, right. <laughs> you can put a brick on there. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, man. So um, just so that we can close out on a, on a, for some level of a, a school-based thing, STEM stands for something. Can you right. give us, a, a, you know, give us what it stands for and then right. uh, what your personal vision, besides you leaving, what your personal vision is for the school? And then, man, we're going to send this video out to people and hopefully it can do something positive. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. And there's three reasons why we felt that focus was important. Um, the first one is job opportunities. So, if you um, if you look out at the open jobs, there's about a million job openings looking for individuals that have STEM backgrounds. So, this is about you know putting kids on a path to uh, attain some of those open positions. The second reason why we felt STEM was important is because, you know, if you look at um, the United States and its standing in the world in math and science, we lag behind. So the thought here is that with a STEM focused school, it would help increase our standing in the world, you know, not just in the state of Illinois, but in the world. Right. The third reason why we felt STEM was important is because, you know, STEM is really about, you know, project-based learning, touching, feeling, hypothesizing, 
and kids that experience that type of learning experience, they're excited about learning. They enjoy coming to school. They're engaged. And we felt like, you know, when you have a love of learning, it provides a firm foundation for no matter what career you choose in life. You don't have to pursue a career in STEM. You could, you know, whatever you do, just having that firm foundation and having that love of learning is important. So those are the, the three reasons why we felt it was important. In terms of my vision about the school, it's about helping to uh, improve the educational experience of the kids. You know, if you talk to some of the families and their experiences right now, because of the way, you know, because they don't have a school close by, I mean, they're getting on a bus in rain, sleet, hail, no matter what, in inclement weather, walking through it, standing at the bus stops, you know, waiting on a bus, going to another community. And, you know, sometimes some of those schools, some of those experiences, they don't even, you know, they don't feel welcome. They don't feel embraced. Um, if you go to some of those schools where those kids are bused to, you know, at the end of the school day, you know, the kids that have to be bused back to the central core, they go to the front of the school, they, you know, board the bus, the other kids in the school, because, you know, the school's in their neighborhood, they go out back in the playground, they're playing with their friends. Mm -hmm. Again, I mean, that just adds to the, you know, the, the, experience, the educational experience that they're losing, you know, by not having a school in their neighborhood. Uh, you know, the other thing is, you know, they can't participate in after school activities. I mean, I was fortunate to have, you know, a chance to, to do, you know, do stuff in the arts or do, you know, sports and stuff. I didn't have to you know, worry like, well, I guess I can't do that because I got to get on a bus. Like, you know, I would hope that, you know, my vision in a perfect, you know, once this school is open, you know, kids are, are you know, embraced. They, they don't have to wake up as early in the morning <laughs> <laughs> to get on a bus if they don't want to. Parents are more engaged because it's easier to join PTA meetings. They know who lives on their block. You know, in the, in the central core, you might already know this, you know, you can live on a block and, and the kids can go to four different schools, four different elementary schools, wow. on the same block. And it, it's a divided community. I mean, you know, they'll have meetings, you know, on the central core and they'll say, oh, um, you know, because they go to different schools, they, they don't even know that they're neighbors <laughs> half the time. So it, it's a sad experience. And so, you know, my vision, my hope is that, you know, when this is done and the school opens that, you know, children's lives are changed and it changes generations. You know, you know, our belief is that this, you know, doing this, opening this STEM community school will change multiple generations, not just, you know, a class of, you know, 500 kids or whatever. We're talking generations because this issue has been occurring for 40 years, over 40 years, almost 50 years. So several decades. And, you know, our intent is that, you know, this changes something. It's, you know, we're dealing with, it's a David versus Goliath fight right now, to be honest. Mm -hmm. This is not, you know, this is, this is, this is huge. I mean, you know, this is an, a, something that's been occurring for so long and to try to stop something that's been happening for 40 years, it's, it's, it requires major pushback. And so, you know, we're fighting it and we're going to, we're going to keep fighting and, and keep grinding and, uh, you know, hopefully, at the end of this, you know, we, we, we get what we, what we're aiming for. You guys will win. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> and yeah. you guys, and we, and as a person who uh, is in Evanston, man, we thank you for your fight. Uh, I'm again, I'm going to get this thing out and see if it does have some feet of its own, this little video. I'm going to try to send it to some people, man, and hopefully give y'all the support that y'all need. You and I know. We're going to still keep doing our work as members of Cap Alpha Psi to keep, uh, you know, the community going forward, man. And I, I definitely appreciate you taking your time out, the, out of today's blizzard <laughs> <laughs> right, right. To, uh, to jump on this thing with me, man. I'm going at that point, I'm going to let you go. If there's something else you need to okay. tell yeah. the world, let me know right <laughs> now. Yeah, no, appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate everything you do. Thank you for your platform. Thanks for inviting me to come out. Uh, we have a website. So, you know, if you need to, you feel the need to, you know, participate or join the, the fight or, 
you know, contribute financially, we would love that. Uh, the, the website address is www.stemschoolevanston.net. Uh, net. So um, thanks, and we'll, we'll keep grinding. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> All right.